Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to today's Caffeine for the Soul. And if you enjoy the things that I talk about in these podcasts, then obviously I'd love you to subscribe and uh, rate the podcast, but also check out our basic course in Living from the Inside Out, which you can find for free at michaelneal.org forward slash basic course. And what I want to talk about today, it, it sounds religious. I know that. It has the word heaven in it, and it, it, it's a actual slight, slight um, misquotation from most versions of the New Testament where, where uh, the, 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 the actual quotation is generally some version of, seek first the kingdom of God and all else will be added unto you. And then in later, he, he, Jesus says, well, um, the kingdom of heaven is within you. And I just kind of like to amalgamate them in my thinking because I'm not looking at it as trying to interpret what Jesus said, and I'm not looking at it from a Christian point of view. I'm looking at what's the truth behind the human experience, regardless of religion or lack thereof. And so I'm going to ask some leeway if you are religious or even irreligious to, to use some religious language to get at universal truth. So for me, the kingdom of heaven is within you is a very meaningful phrase. It points to, there's a, there's a Zen story about a samurai warrior who'd conquered every enemy that he could face here on earth. And so he decided that he wanted to go into the kingdoms of heaven and hell and, and conquer any enemies that might be there. And he heard that there was a particular Zen master who knew where the gates to the kingdom of heaven were and where the gates to the kingdom of hell were. And so this samurai warrior went to the Zen master and initially was respectful of, of him and asked him to show him the gates to the kingdom of, of hell and the kingdom of heaven. And the Zen master just started making fun of him. Oh, you want me to show you the ga- the ga- where the gates of heaven are? Ooh, big samurai with your big sword. What are you going to do? And he just started, I, he probably didn't sound like that, but he started mocking him. And the samurai warrior was so unused to this and he so thrown and he got so angry that he drew his sword and he was about to strike down the Zen master. And the Zen master just looked at him and said, here are the gates to the kingdom of hell. And the samurai realized what he was about to do. And he burst into tears and he humbled himself and he put away his sword and he begged forgiveness. And the master said, and here are the gates to the kingdom of heaven. And for me, what it means to say the kingdom of heaven is within you is that the kingdom of heaven is a feeling. It is the feeling of you. It is the feeling of life. It is the feeling of pure, formless spirit that surrounds us, that fills our body if we let it. It is the aliveness, the difference between the quick and the dead. I I remember my dad was, was killed in a car accident in 1992, and I'd not been around much death in my life. Oh, we didn't even have pets, so I hadn't really seen much. And I remember flying back to, um, to the funeral and the casket. It was a closed casket for obvious reasons, but I remember getting to the casket and knowing in a way that I can't explain that my dad wasn't in there. It was just a body. And that was the day where I really started seeing, oh, there is an animating spirit in people, in life. That feeling of that, that is the kingdom of heaven. That is the peace that passeth all understanding. That is our true and deepest nature. And if we seek first the kingdom of heaven, that beautiful feeling within us, that formless spirit at the heart of who we are, 
then all else will be added unto us. Then it, we will naturally draw to us the people and the circumstances that will help us create the form of heaven here on earth. That will help us create the kinds of things and situations and relationships that make the form of life beautiful. But if we start trying to go after the things, we wind up sometimes getting the things, but we kind of never get to heaven. We kind of never get to experience the pure joy of simply being that we all had as babies. It is virtually impossible. It's possible, but it is virtually impossible to hang out with a baby and not fall in love because that's where they live. They live in the kingdom of heaven the way I'm using the phrase. And it takes us there just to look at them, just to be with them. Same with puppies and kittens and anything that you drop your guard around that's just in touch with itself, that has not yet contaminated its own presence, that has not yet left Eden gives us a taste of heaven, a taste of our original nature, a taste of Eden, a return to Eden. And from there, not only does it not matter so much if things don't happen, but they're far more likely to happen. Because when we show up from that place in us, People are naturally drawn to us in the way that people are naturally drawn to babies. They like babies or kittens if they like kittens or puppies if they like puppies or pandas if they like pandas. And people are predisposed to support us and to help us. And there's something that just seems to shift in, in the universe. It's like when you really are coming to life from that feeling, from that presence. It, 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 it's like life itself is falling over itself to support you and to help you and to bring you more of what you want in form because you already have what you are in the formless, as opposed to trying to create forms that you think will bring you pure spirit, pure joy, pure presence, pure ease. It would be like if a baby thought, well, this, this, you know, I want to, I want to feel, um, you know, one with everything. So I need uh, a nicer onesie and I need that. Oh God, the kid next door. His baby carriage is so much nicer than mine, and he's got designer diapers, and I have these like Target diapers, and I, I, and, and, and it, it, I mean, it's a ridiculous thought. It needs nothing in form but love and food and kindness. Well, we're, we're still pretty simple creatures, and if we seek first that place inside us, that space inside us, of that space before thought, before concept, before our ideas of what we need to be happy, then we will find it so much easier to create. One of the very first lines I wrote in my very first book was that happiness leads to success a heck of a lot more often than success leads to happiness. And in the same way, when we put our attention on our own true nature, everything else gets added unto us. Have fun, learn heaps, happy exploring, and I'll talk with you soon. Mm -hmm.